Alrighty, welcome to another eight player Vintage Cube Draft League. Getting in some practice on the MTGO Vintage Cube. Part of the reason, too, is these uh, 64 player drafts are go going on now. And uh, this is not one of them, this is a draft league. But I want to get prepared and try to take down some of these 64s. So a little more reps with this cube in particular. Seems good to me. What do we got here? Well, we got a Mana Drain and a Minskin Boo. Mm, nothing else is close. I don't think Channel is close. Fiery Confluence is very good, but I would take either of these. And honestly, I think you're supposed to take Minskin Boo at this point. Chromox also not bad. The thing is, Minskin Boo is just such an absurdly powerful card. If you cast it and they don't kill it, you just often win the game. And even if they do, you're left with a 4-4 trample. It's just such a huge swing. So I, I like Minskin Boo more than Mana Drain. In a pick one, pack one situation, though, kind of unfortunate because I wish I just went Mana Drain into Hole Breacher. That would be a, a better start. But honestly, I could I could take Hole Breacher here. Could also take Solitude. Shell Dock, I think, is a worse blue card than Hole Breacher. I think pick one in Hole Breacher is good. The other thing to note is, this: since this isn't a team draft, and that'll be true of the 64 player drafts too, getting past a Hole Breacher and taking it is actually a lot better because if this was a team draft, whoever was passing to me, would probably put in some effort to make sure I didn't get past a Wheel of Fortune or a Time Twister. But given that uh, we're, we're not doing that, it's a it's an eight-player queue, not that incentive. So I think Hole Breach is enough better than Taiga that I'm supposed to take it. Also, this pack's pretty stacked. There's Necromancy, Blood Tithe, Solitude, Chariot, Sheldock, Basalt Monolith. Like, there's a chance that I can get uh, the... Taiga back here. And now I'm going to take Birds of Paradise. Birds is awesome. I think being like an aggressive teamer deck is a totally legit strategy. So I think I'm going to make these cards a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to take the Birds of Paradise here since Birds helps cast both these cards very effectively and by far the best card in the pack. Uh, this pack's a little bit less enticing. Honestly, I might take Once Upon a Time here. It's a little early to want to go into Prismatic Ending and try to draft like a Domain deck, though that is a legit strategy as well. I'm not a big Astral Dragon or World's Plan Worm fan without Flash, and this is not really looking like that quite yet. I think Once Upon a Time is just a very solid card. It helps you find your one-drops, and look, there's an Ignoble Hierarch and a Stomping Ground, and a Romanop as well, and a Thespian Stage, but I'm going to take the Ignoble at this point, I could also be like, I mean, we'll see which other colors develop, but base green, either like green, blue, splash, Minskin Boo, or green, red, splash, Hole Breacher, or maybe just green, red, and don't splash, Hole Breacher, we'll see. But I think I like Ignoble. And then, you know, we can cross our fingers and hopefully one of Taiga or Stomping Grounds kind of comes back, does a loop, and we get to take it next. And then here, well, here we can just take Fractured Identity. It's a little odd to take a blue-white card when we have green, blue, and red stuff, but this is just a fairly easily splashable card. Again, imagine we end up in base green-blue, which is a color combination I really like, unlike uh, normal drafts. Splash red for Minsk and Boo, white for Fracture Identity. Plus, I think Torsten and Crater Hoof are just not that good. They're a little hard. They, they take a lot of work to make good, whereas Fracture Identity, you just need to cast it. So I like picking up Fracture Identity here and following up, oh, easy Verdant Catacombs. It's funny because black's the one color we're not, but Verdant is a base green fetch, which is excellent. And then I'll find some duels because we're looking like a kind of four color mid-range deck, something like that, maybe five. There's also Beseju and Zeotora's Proving Ground, but I think Verdant's just a much better land. Okay, so that actually makes it a little difficult here because Copperline Gorge would be nice as untapped green for the birds and the Ignoble that help cast Minsk and Boo. But I think I'm supposed to take Rafine's Tower because it makes Verdant into a four color land already. If I'm splashing Fracture Identity, Hole Breacher, who knows, this can cast both parts of those. And at this point, I'm looking likely that I could splash black. Huh, Coalition Relic came back, so did Channel, so did Sentinel. I actually like Sentinel and Aimless City a lot, but I'm just going to take Temple Garden. Green fetches, or green duels rather, are really important. So Temple Garden is a nice one. And Taiga came back. Oh, excellent. This is working out really well. So now that I have this Taiga, now the Verdant is untapped red and green. Well, it's also untapped green, but it's untapped red. Take Ulvenwald Oddity, just like an assertive mid-range deck. I think this is a really good strategy in this kind of cube. And I'll take World Spine Worm as a speculative pick. It does mean that nobody at the table has opened Flash, presumably. So, hmm. Thespian Stage, Ramanop, or Blooming Marsh. These are all... Legit. I'll spec on Ramanop. Maybe I'll get a strip mine. That, that could be sweet. 
Oh, and look, Ramanop plus Nurturing Peatland. Why not? Soulscar Mage, don't care about that. Well, great pack one. Pack two, oh, perfect. Fourth ear Lingus. I mean, I like Windswept Teeth, and obviously it pains me every time I pass the Telerian Academy, but this is a great fourth ear Lingus deck. I've got some Accelerants. I've got some Fixing. I'm kind of assertive, which again helps with that. This whole Breacher is not looking too hot, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll spec on that. That's fine. All right, fourth ear Lingus goes here. And maybe if we're lucky, a Delighted Halfling could come back. Uh, here we've got much worse pack. There's like a Jace Vryn's Prodigy, which I don't have the kinds of spells you, you really want to Jace all that much. Tribal Flames will probably wheel. I might take Uro. If you end up blue-green with some fetches and, and whatnot, Uro is pretty strong. There's also Escape to the Wilds, but I think I like Uro better than that. And I think Tribal Flames has a good chance of coming back. So yeah, I'll go with the Uro for now. And here we have, I think, a pretty easy Wooded Foothills. Wooded Foothills is just perfect. Any green fetch is at least red, green, white at this point. And I guess Wooded Foothills actually is exactly that because it can't get Ravine's Tower. But that's still very good for what I'm doing. I'll try to pick up a Tropical Island. I, I do like Ponder, but I think Foothills accomplishes a lot of my goals better. And there's Oko. Oh, with a Territorial Kavu. Pretty likely to come back, but definitely going to take the Oko here. It's the perfect card to cast turn two after accelerating. So Oko is a lovely pickup. And if Territorial Kavu doesn't come back, maybe Elvish Mystic or Blood Crypt will. But I really like drafting the Domain Style decks, and I'm hoping that we can get some more support for that. Mm, this pack has a Snapcaster Mage with nothing to snap back. Crop rotation, but I don't really have a, a reason to want that. Crucible, but I have Ramanop already, and I don't play Ramanop with just a couple of fetch lands, even with a nurturing peat land, so I kind of think I just take Savannah just because green duels are that good. I, Raging Ravine's fine, but I, I like I just like my dual lands. Oh, there's Wasteland and Sylvan Library. Not really in a position to take Titania quite yet. I could take Wasteland. It goes nicely with the, the Ramanop. And, but Sylvan's also really nice with all these fetches and some pretty powerful stuff to play, though. Uro's nice with Wasteland. I think I'll just go with the Sylvan here. And then here's Badlands and Plateau. There's also Prime Time, but Badlands makes Wooded into Black. Verdant's already red, though. Plateau alternately makes Wooded into, well, Wooded's already white. So of those, the Badlands helps a little bit more. There's also Walking Ballista, but I feel like green can usually do better for cards around that casting cost. And here, I don't, I don't know why Deep Force Hermit's still hanging around, but here we are. Lingering Souls is actually kind of a decent play when you're trying to protect the Monarch here. I don't think I want Shadow Spear. I don't think I really want Treachery. Magda, Magda is good, but I'd rather have a Mana Dork, I think. I kind of like Lingering Souls. When you're going one into three, Lingering Souls can be a decent play. All right, and here we've got Mind Twist, which is kind of slow. Pyromancer is a pretty strong card, but it, you try to stay away of double color cards that aren't green. I mean, Uro is kind of an exception here. Rexage is a fine card. Thieving Skydiver is also a pretty great one. Uh, I think I should just take Rexage. This isn't really a balanced deck either, though. I guess I have a couple Planeswalkers. No, Rexage is good. You always want to have one of those. Tribal Flames did wheel, and I think at two mana deal five, that's good enough. I don't need to take a Golgari Rot Farm here. I don't think that's necessary. Okay, Manglehorn versus Renegade Rallier. Rallier basically just brings back lands. There's also Soul Guide Lantern as a graveyard hate card. Mm, I actually think I want Soul Guide as the sideboard card. This deck's pretty soft to reanimate All right, Territorial Cavo came back. Excellent. And you know what? I'll take the Crucible in case somehow I... Actually, no, no, no. Maybe I should just take Elite Spellbinder. Elite Spellbinder's awesome. Let's just take that. Oh, and Titania came back. Okay. Titania is kind of interesting. Oh, and Horizon Canopy. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Well, I guess I kind of wish I took the Wasteland, given the Titania wield, but I like to keep my fetches and other lands separate. But I think this is still pretty great going into pack three. I mean, we've got plenty of playables. We've got, I think, a pretty good plan. Could use more Disruption. So Strip Mine would still be awesome. Um... If I pick up Flash for World Spawn, I guess I would do that. Could use like a counter spell or two. And also a blue green land would be really helpful. All right. So, well, we're going to have that decision. We're going to wield Brawler, <laughs> almost assuredly. But it's Mana Leak versus Bloodstained Mire. 
my mana I feel is pretty good. Mana leak, mana leak's really important for this style of deck. I wish I had better blue fixing. Blitzing Mire is a five color land. I should just take the five color land. I think that that is just it's going to be really good to be able to just rattle off all these spells. And it makes Titania into a pretty good play. Even without the Wasteland here. Romanop is also something to consider. You know, it might might get that one in. And I think the Lingering Souls and the Hole Breacher I probably wouldn't play at this point. Plus, if I don't take Mana, like, whoa, never mind. There's a Time Walk. I was going to say, maybe I don't play blue. But uh, yeah, I'm going to take Time Walk. And... Well, maybe maybe get a cheeky overgrown tomb back, but all right, well, blue it is. Time walk, here we go. Really would like to find a blue duel that I can fetch with all these lands. Well, Scalding Tarn kind of does that, so we'll easily slam Scalding Tarn here. And then there's a Field of the Dead there that I don't normally play that card, but it's not a zero when you have this many different lands. Oh, and there's Tropical Island. Trop has to be good, because Trop makes both Wooded and Verdant into untapped blue. So... And then once I have that, I have basically perfect mana. Actually, I don't think I've had better mana on almost any deck I've ever drafted. <laughs> Having four fetches in the full suite of duels is just great. And then, yeah, I mean, Vamp is good. Hex Drinker is good. Bone Crusher is good. But the, the beauty here is that I can just basically take good spells the rest of the time, and I will be totally fine. All right, well, <laughs> I said I wouldn't have to take... I could just take all spells, but I do like Volcanic. I should probably still take Nyssa. Nyssa is a pretty good card to ramp into, and I have Birds and Ignoble. Plus, Nyssa, Trop, Time Walk is a Mondo combo. You go Nyssa, you tap out for Nyssa, you untap the Trop, tap it to cast Time Walk, and then you win the game really easily from there. I do also like Gaia's Cradle in some decks, especially with uh, four Theorlingus, but this is an easy Sylvan Karyatid. Sylvan Karyatid into some of these good plays. I mean, really, the, the Mana Leak is the only thing that I wish I had taken. Though Bloodstained Mire is pretty nice. Because having a mana leak here would have worked. Also, I never saw any draw sevens for this whole breacher. Maybe Ramanop is good, but even without playing extra lands, like Ramanop is just not. Like without Fast Bond or Exploration, it's just not that good. Maybe I'll play Soul Guide Lantern. I, I'm missing a couple of playables here and then Lingering Souls. Just to. Because right now I'm at 20 land, even with those two cards in. So it's worth keeping in mind that. uh do need to hit a certain number of playables, but I'm not too worried. First of all, we have a bunch of card packs left. Two packs we haven't seen and a bunch of wheel packs. So my guess is we actually don't even end up playing both those cards, but I'll put them in for now. Oh, this is interesting. There's a flash in this pack, and I have World Spine Worm. The problem is I don't really have a lot of card draw, but I guess I have a Sylvan Library. All right, it's just such an I win button. I think I think it's worth it. And then here, I don't really think Days is good, but I do like Tarmogoy for a reasonable amount, but I think Terra Sunder is going to be pretty nice. It's a really good removal spell, so I'm going to take Terra Sunder here. I'll take the Soul Guide out for now. Put the World Spine in. Plus with Nissa, I could cast World Spine. <laughs> and this is at 18 land right now. I, I wouldn't mind playing 18 land with two if I end up playing both the lands that sack to draw a card. And I have like a Once Upon a Time... Tamiya would have been nice. Regrowth we already saw in past in pack one, and I don't recall seeing Eternal Witness, but at this point we're not going to see Witness or Tamiya. Still, this deck looks pretty awesome to me. This is a really good version of the five-color deck. Really, the only thing I'm missing, like I mentioned, is, is a Counterspell or, or a Thought Seizer Duress or something like that, because right now this deck is not going to do its best at stopping a combo deck from doing its thing. Um, Tundra's fine. Brawler is probably good. Two mana, five, three. There's also Gruff Triplets because you can flash in Gruff Triplets. You end up with two six sixes. Gruff Triplets is also fairly castable. Yeah, maybe I should just take that. That seems better. Mm, Overgrown Tomb did wheel. Though <laughs> I didn't really end up with a whole lot of black cards to cast. But it's actually nice because I have a, some domain cards. I have Kavu and Tribal Flames. And I don't think I, I, I don't want a third one of these lands, the, the sack lands, to draw a card and touch the spirit realm is just whatever. Okay, Upheaval, Knight of the Reliquary, or Field of the Dead. I mean, Field of the Dead is good with Uro, I guess, is a way to ramp up. It can be okay with, like, Titania. I don't really think I want to play Knight of the Reliquary. Sure, I'll take Field of the Dead. Maybe I won't even play it, but I could side it in. Vindicate I will play, though. I think that that is going to be castable. All right, I'll take Scrubland as well. 
And I suppose Cavalier of Thorns. I'm not going to play a second Scrubland, though I don't think I'm going to main Cavalier either. All right, <laughs> what a deck. All right, so I think I'm. we're almost done here. I'll, I'll cut the Lingering Souls, I think. I don't know if I should play Field of the Dead. Here, I'm going to play it for science. If it's not good in this deck that literally has all unique lands, then it's just not good. All right, so the question for mana base is, how many green sources do I have? Because that's going to be the the main thing I'd be concerned about. And the answer is, I have plenty, I think. Yeah. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 turn 1 green sources. Honestly, I'm going to have enough lands of every type. I guess just because of Uro, let's just go ahead and add an island in a, in a forest and call it a day. Uh, look, just in case you wanted to know, so I have 11 green, so all my... So this gets red, this gets red, like my two fetches. I think all my fetches get red. Yeah, and then I have Badlands, Taiga. So I have six red sources. Mm, it's possible, actually, that I that I want to do one more red source, but let's see. Blue, all my fetches get blue. Is that accurate? Bloodstained Mire does not get blue. See, so yeah, I needed that volcanic. So I have three, four, five, six... Six blue sources plus birds and like once upon a time and whatnot. And I think I probably have more black than I need. Honestly, I might cut this scrubland. Because right now I have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine black sources. I don't need anywhere close to that. Maybe I cut nurturing peatland. Because I'm not playing the ramen up. I cut nurturing peatland and scrubland and I add in... A mountain and an island. All right, two islands is the only uh, double up on <laughs> uh, on on lands. One, two, three, so seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I still have inf oh, and there's a forest snuck in. I still have enough blue or green here, and then plains. I, I gotta have enough white, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven white sources. Yeah. All right, this looks great. Let's hop in and see how we do. Alrighty, time for round one. I would like to play first, and I'm going to mulligan this hand. You just can't keep a five land, two five drop hand. That's, that is not how this works. Oh, look at this. Once upon a time, bailing me out. So I'm definitely going to keep this hand. I'm definitely going to not put back any of the four cards to the right of, of Tribal Flames, obviously. So do I put back Tribal Flames, four drop or five drop? I'll put back Tribal Flames. We'll, we'll, we'll see how this ends up working. I'm going to cast this now because if I find a tap land, I'll want to play it. All right, well, oh, feel the dead. You're on my list. I'm going to take the Rafine's Tower. I'm going to play it, but I don't have a green source. All right. If I draw a forest, then this hand becomes awesome. Turn two, Karyatid. Maybe turn three, Oddity, into um, Time Walk. Or if I draw a fetch land, I can maybe just go like Titania into replay fetch land into time walk a turn later. But we'll see. Opponent probed me. So they'll know how lucky it is when I play this turn two Sylvan Karyatid, I guess, is kind of the answer to that. And let's see what they are up to. Turn one, nurturing peatland dreams of steel and oil. Take my Sylvan Karyatid. Okay. Well, given that, I'm almost assuredly just going to cast Time Walk here. Uh, no reason to play the Badlands. It is funny that I've drawn <laughs> all, all my non-forest lands here. So this is the only untapped black source they had, clearly. And it also points to them being somewhat light on lands overall, if that's the only black source. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't have Vindicate or another white or black source, but now I have both. So... This actually could mana screw them pretty nicely. We'll, we'll see. All right, they have a tap black source. A green land wouldn't be too bad. Uh, you know what? Elite Spellbinder is also fine. Let's see what they're up to here. What you got going? Oh, geez. Uh, some good cards. Oh, man. Him to Turok. I guess I have to take that. Animate dead. Doesn't do anything. Yeah. All right. Well, they must have drawn the swamp. How lucky. Because they would have played swamp over peatland. So had they not drawn the swamp... I could be in a pretty good position here. As things go, I'm not. 
there's not much I can even draw that is that great here. They're going to discard the Flesh Gorger so they can animate it. But I think I can still beat that. Flesh Gorger is not, well, it's not that, it's not unbeatable. It's a maybe a 6-5 menace lifelink, but this deck basically is incapable of winning a game where it doesn't play a green source. And uh, this is looking like that sort of game. I even cast Once Upon a Time. I looked at, I've, I've seen the top eight cards of my library and somehow no green sources. All right, well, Scrapwork Mutt's getting in. They're going to cast Animate Dead here. And I am going to draw and concede, most likely here. Um, yeah. No, no bueno. All right, well... Let's see. Terra Sunder would have been would have been decent, but I feel like I was really far behind. All right, I'm gonna take the stupid field of the dead out and put in a forest. I also want to put in a Soul Guide Lantern. What do I want to cut? I don't want to cut Rexage or Vindicate or Terra Sunder. Um, I like most of the big cards. I guess I could cut Tribal Flames. It can kill Phyrexian Flesh Gorge, which is funny. And I'll put Hull Breacher in against decks that have card draw, but I don't think you need to main deck that card. All right. Game two on the play here. And this hand is a lot better because this hand has turn one, Tarn to get Taiga for Ignoble. But, well, let's first once upon a time and see what we can find here. Mana Dork into Uro or maybe Mana Dork into Mana Dork. But I would like to go turn one, Ignoble, Hierarch, turn two, Uro. And as long as I can find a, a land with once upon a time, that seems like a pretty viable plan. And then maybe after that, go carry it to time walk into like a fractured identity or at some point bring back Earl. I already have three cards that are go to the graveyard. And this deck, it can exile time walk. I don't have any way to bring it back. So it's not really a big concern. All right. Um, let's start by casting once upon a time. Trop, wooded foothills. I guess I just take the wooded foothills and I'll get the trop. And play ignoble yeah that's going to be better than taiga of course and the reason i got foothills over just the trop itself is because i want to bring back Uro. so having an extra card in my graveyard is a pretty big game dreams of steel and oil on turn one would be pretty annoying i have the probe again let's hope they don't have that because i really want to get this uro into the graveyard before they have the opportunity to exile it well i guess actually dreams of steel and oil also exiles a creature from your graveyard so i guess i just don't want them to have that card but Otherwise, I really like this hand. I mean, the Uro is a big part of why this hand is good. So hopefully they don't have the same opener. Yeah, they do. Okay. Let's see. Can you just find like a Minsk and Boo or something? Mm. Let's just play the Karyatid and then wait on the Tarn here. I'm kind of thinking I just get a Rafine's Tower because then I'll just have all five colors here. Casting Time Walk here doesn't seem like it does a whole lot for me. Drawing four Theorlingus or Minsk and Boo or Nyssa or Titania, all of those are just absurdly good here. So I basically, I got my Uro Duress or, you know, taken by this card. And then uh, I just need to find any sort of action here, pretty much. All right, let's go. All right, uh, yeah. The reason I'm casting Time Walk is I think him to Turok would be a pretty big bummer or a, a, some sort of hand disruption that takes the time walk. Let's just get my card back out of it. Hope to draw something. Yeah, Oko definitely counts as something. All right, blue, green, one. I'm just going to make a food. I don't really want to convert any of my creatures into a an elk and hit. And then if they play something good, they know about the fracture identity, but doesn't mean they can do anything about it. I'm going to let the Bloodstained Mire stay in play here because if I draw Titania a Mire in play is another 5-3 and I don't really have a reason to do otherwise oh Baleful Mastery but I get to draw a card okay now I kind of wish I'd turn my Sylvan Keratin into an Elk <laughs> all right Soul Guide Lantern oh Exile Baleful Mastery I'm just going to draw a card here I feel like the uh Fractured Identity in hand gives me something to play even if uh, even if they reanimate something. And I really, I'm up on mana, but down on cards. They have six cards in their hand. I effectively have one. 
So I need to get one of my expensive cards into play because if I had played Titania or Nyssa a turn before, I would have been well on my way to winning the game. Now it's not clear that it's going to be good enough. It's, they, they still have six cards in their hand now that they played Knight's Whisper to refill. They're probably going to wait to cast a creature until they can... I mean, they're hoping to like him or something, the Fractured Identity, though they did tap such they can't do that. So basically, when you're up this much on mana, you do need to try to close out the game. And I think sitting around on Soul Guide Lantern is not the way to do that. Okay, Blood Tithe Harvester. Mm -hmm. I think I'll sack the food. I don't really see a reason not to. Draw. <laughs> uh, do I want a Fractured? The Blood Tithe? I don't think so. I feel like I could do a little better than that. And they also, since they already have the blood, if I Fracture Identity that and then they just discard something good to the blood token, it's just not going to work out well for me. The downside is if they untap and cast him to Turok, I'll wish I had cast Fracture Identity, especially since the blood token would be pretty nice for me to discard a, you know, whatever, a useless card to try to dig a little deeper. But I don't think I'm supposed to use it here. These have been a nice two games. A little no lander into all lander as, as, as they go. Obviously, drawing World Spine Worm would be amazing now that I've drawn Flash. Any of the any any card in my deck that costs like four or more mana is gonna be very good. Oh, interesting. Vamping. This feels like him to Turok, but you know, as long as I don't keep Savannah. Obviously, I'd rather keep Fracture Identity than anything else, but as long as I don't keep Savannah, if I keep Savannah, it's gonna be pretty annoying. And most of my three mana spells are pretty good. I guess Oko and Uro are gone, but I have a bunch of three mana spells that are fairly high impact that I wouldn't mind drawing. Okay. They have successfully Vampiric Tutored. They're going to grief me. Okay. They evoked it pitching Reanimate? Okay. Interesting. So I guess they have a... Uh, like a Necromancy or Animate Dead. Or I suppose Exhum would actually do it too. They evoked Grief on three minutes. They have to have a way to animate it, right? Oh, or they have a different plan here. Now they're going to discard their Flesh Gorger and animate that. The good thing is Flesh Gorger is like pretty weak when it comes to animating like seven drop things like, you know, or more like a Troxer or whatever would end the game a lot sooner. And Gristle Ran, I just couldn't beat any of those. So I could, I have a lot of cards that can still beat a Flesh Gorger here. Birds of Paradise is not one of them. I'm going to keep the Savannah in hand. Not because I think it's, you know, it's not really going to protect me from a Him to Turok here or whatever, but I just don't think uh, I need to play it. And. Maybe if I draw another brick, then, then I'll start getting protected from him. I don't know. It doesn't really seem like playing it is, is all that useful. Collective Brutality. All right. So I guess if I draw, I guess I'll take 10 here, 9 here. All right. Terra Sunder's pretty good. Um, let's hit in the air for one. Okay. So I get to exile the Flesh Gorger. Actual, well, I'm actually going to exile the Animate Dead. Since that's the... I don't have to pay the ward to do that. Wow, they actually... <laughs> reanimating this and paying 7 life would have effectively made me pay 7 life. So, interesting. I'm not saying that they were wrong to pitch the reanimate, but it actually would have worked out way better for them otherwise. All right. Cast on animate dead. This does mean that the flesh gorger is still in the graveyard to be further animated, but I think that's okay. And I'll take three going down to six here. And if we can get a little bit of action, we could come back here. I mean, if I cast Minsk and Boo or Fourth Year Lingus next turn, it's really not that bad. The One Ring. Oh. I wish I knew about that. I would have maybe boarded in Hole Breacher. All right. Well, let's see. Titania would be good. Nissa would be good. Any of my expensive cards would be pretty good. If I can find one of those. Territorial Cobb. Well, it's not the worst. 
Pass the turn. Oh, that's a reason to keep a card in hand, too. I can discard it to, to draw a card. Though, I, I basically, at this point, I don't think I can win. Like, they if they brick on <laughs> drawing all those extra cards and I draw, like, probably two of my best cards in a row, like, if I drew Minsk and Boo and then drew Fourth Year Lingus or, you know, Titania and then Fourth Year Lingus or something... I suppose I could see myself coming back. Maybe if the territorial territorial Kavu gets to attack and discard a Savannah to draw a spell and I play like Nissa plus Titania in the same turn or something that we're talking. But the way things currently are going, it does not look very close here. But we'll see. Okay. They didn't attack. They didn't play anything. That's odd. All right. Can I get to attack with this Kavu? If they kill the Kavu before I attack, it's pretty bad. All right, well, now get to attack. And I'm going to discard a card. I didn't draw anything this turn, but I need this to hit. They did play like a kind of weak. Well, I hit a six drop. Actually, that's kind of good. They did have a kind of weak turn here. And if they let me attack with Kavu, they maybe don't have removal for it. Or they just mistimed it. <laughs> All right, they're chumping. Sure. All right, I'm going to cast Gruff Triplets because I don't really have a reason not to. And I guess I'll leave the Caryatid up. Or no, I'll leave the Bird up because I already have a bunch of ground blockers and Gruff Triplets. And the Bird can maybe block like, I don't know, if a Flyer gets Gorio's Vengeance or Sneak Attacked. Not that I really think I would be winning the game in the, under those circumstances, but this seems better. Do they really have no plays here? Maybe they have like a Toxic Deluge or Damnation, but it's not like I'm going to beat that by sitting around and not playing spells. I mean, Gruff Triplets is pretty big. Let's see if... Uh, I, I kind of forgot about that one. I mean, it's in there because of Flash, but it's also eminently castable. And man, there's looks like there's a chance this could do something. I feel like they have a, a Burn spell or Removal spell. K Command, all right. Discard a card and they got Phyrexian Flesh Gorger back. Sure. They go to 12. I guess they can cast a Phyrexian Flesh Gorger for 7 mana. This is going to be their plan. So basically at 19 if I attack. But I think I will attack with the Territorial Kavu. I probably won't attack with the Gruff Triplets. It doesn't really make sense to attack with those. Assuming they cast the Flesh Gorger, obviously they could be doing something else instead. Nurturing Peatland is their land? And they're drawing a card with it? No. Wow. Nurturing Peatland was the only land they had? That is wild. Okay. That means they have six cards in hand and none of them are lands? Okay. Well, unfortunately, they didn't draw anything there. Let's attack with the Territorial Kavu. And... If I attack with everything... And they block a Gruff Triplets, they take 11, but then they gain 7. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to discard and draw and hope to hit something good. I just don't think attack with the Gruff Triplets really is, is great there. I don't know. All right. I mean, I've thought I've lost this game for a long time, so... Oh, snuff out. Well, attacking with the Gruff Triplets really wouldn't work out then. All right, snuff out is fine. And I'm really glad I got to attack and discard a card because we're really uh, in search of some action here. They're at four. I mean, they have to now attack with Flesh Gorger or Game Life in some other way. Otherwise, the, run, what, the one ring kills them. If they attack with Flesh Gorger, what do I block with? It's kind of interesting because... It has Menace. I could block with two Gruff Triplets, and I'd end up with a 9-9 nine -nine Gruff Triplets in play. I don't love that, but it does kill the Flesh Gorger. And I guess killing one of the Gruff Triplets is actually not really going to make the combat go badly, because if you kill one, it makes the... As long as it's not an Exile effect, and they've... They still have bale Baleful Mastery somewhere. That's unfortunate. Um... Because, oh, no, 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 Bale, that was the same game. No, the Baleful Mastery is gone. All right, well, they're casting something else, so I guess we'll see what what's what. Archon of Cruelty. 
Uh, oh, I actually will sack a Gruff Triplets and discard a card. I'm at three now. And if they attack with Flesh Gorger, I block with Gruff Triplets. They go to 13. All right, this game's still winnable. I don't, I don't love it, but I think a Playing the Archon before attacking was actually a pretty big error because now that I that I kind of know the drill, know what's happening, if they attack with Flesh Gorger, I can block with a Gruff Triplets that's a 6-6 six, six and throw in Sylvan Carriage, I guess. And if they kill the Gruff Triplets, I have a 12-12 that they have to block. And if they don't kill the Gruff Triplets, then I can attack with both. Actually, now they can't really attack. Okay. Well, I gotta draw something good here. Fourth year Lingus would be pretty good. Minsk and Boo would actually just win me the game. No, nope, Taiga. Yeah, now we're dead. We attack with the two Gruff Triplets. They block one with Gorger. They take seven and gain seven. And then Ring puts them to two. All right. Well, that was unfortunate. Yep, that would have won the game. <laughs> I would have just played that and thrown the triplets. They that was that was that was a beating. All right. Well, this is a league, so I get to keep battling. I think this deck can do better. Let's keep going. All right, time for round two. Let's see if we can redeem ourselves. Oh, I will keep this hand, where I am hoping to uh, once upon a time into a world spine worm. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. All right. So I'm just gonna draw, and I think I'm gonna fire this off because I have some one drops in my deck. Yeah, and it did, in fact, even hit one, though. Uh, honestly, I think... I think I'd rather just take a Titania. I have a fetch land. If I take birds, I'm just on all lands again, and I don't really want that. So let's take Titania. Okay, chase here. The Sylvan Library is not bad. Let's still play the Sylvan Karyatid, because I think I'd rather have outs to play something really good next turn, like a four mana play, then play Sylvan and maybe hope for a three mana play. But maybe that's wrong. Maybe maybe Sylvan opens up a better door. But no, I've got two strong five mana plays. So I would really like to play... If I didn't play Sylvan carry to this turn, I would have to play it next turn. So even if I played Sylvan, I'm not really improving my draws all that much. I don't think. I mean, maybe maybe that's... Maybe I find World Spine Worm and it's just way better. Oh, Vindicate. That's awesome. So let's go land. Vindicate the Jace or Vindicate a land. I'm just going to Vindicate the Jace. And if my opponent wants to save it with Aether Spellbomb, that's fine with me. And I'm going to get Rafine's Tower with the Verdant here. See, look, it worked out the best. I got to play Carrotid 2, Vindicate on 3, and then probably Titania on 4, unless they play something that I want to Fractured. I kind of like having them use the spell bomb because this sets Jace back. They then have to spend next turn playing Jace. I guess they get to crack the desk end of turn. Oh, never mind. They're getting Tinker. Okay. Well, I've got a fractured identity here, so this could work out fine for me. They're not getting Bolus the Citadel, I wouldn't imagine, although they wouldn't have played their land first. See what they are getting. They have two cards in hand. One is Jace. I guess I hope the other is not Force of Will or Force of Negation or Spell Pierce or Days. So there's like four cards that could counter me here. Oh, Kappa Cannoneer. Clever. I can't Fracture Identity that. All right. All right. I kind of like their style here. Let's get Rafine's Tower. But I also think I'm going to be fine because... Titania here gets back Verdant, and then now I've got two five threes. We'll see. They get to put a Mishra's Research Desk in, which will give this unblockable, but I'm going to win the race here. Well, let's see. If they attack me for seven down to 12, they're still pretty hard. They'd be pretty hard pressed to, to kill me next turn, especially since I'll probably just fracture the Jace if they don't play something better. Okay, Cannoneer. Do a little rant here for a second. Cannoneer is one of the just sloppiest templated cards I've ever seen because it, when it itself enters the battlefield, it gives itself a plus one plus one counter unblockable. Ridiculously bad design. Like just, it doesn't like 
it's not like it has a huge negative impact on the game. It's just really not good design to do that. So, yeah. All right. I'm going to take it. And let's get... Um, I have all five colors of lands. Let's just get Trop. Time Walk. That's what I need. All right. So they, they do get to play a Might Stone and Weak Stone next turn, which is kind of unfortunate. But... I think that's all right. Let's draw. Oh, all right. Yeah, let's go Fractured Identity on the Jace. All right, hold on. I have to tap this for blue, or at least one of these things for blue. Play a Bloodstained Mire. Now I attack them for 10. And if they want to play Might Stone a Weak Stone Killing Titania, I just attack them for 10 with my Elements. Elementals. I suppose they can play the Might Stone and Weak Stone and not attack, but I mean, that's better than me uh, <laughs> just losing to the Cannoneer. So here's where we are. All right, Might Stone and Weak Stone comes in. They could also draw two cards, but no, they, then they'd have to have a play this turn. So they kind of have to kill Titania here. Unfortunately, ooh, unfortunately, uh, I don't have a way to get back by the cannoneer. Also, I can't flip the Jace because it's a it, it's a token. Well, it also exiles itself. So let's just get Taiga. I could get ah, whatever Badlands Taiga. Same thing. All right. So they can't quite kill me unless they can play two artifacts this turn. What is this? A ballista? Oh, oof, if that was a ballista. They'd actually win right there. Oh, they get to attack because they have a hanger back. All right. I'm at one. I don't have a lot of outs here. Uh, I have some, though. Minsk and Boo. Fourth year Lingus. All right. Oh, I actually drew a card that would win me the game. Nice. This deck, this deck didn't have its, that dog in it, but now it does. Now it does. All right, let's not get dazed. It's fourth year Lingus for five. And then they're super dead. All right. Oof, what a game. Fast game. All right, so Tinker... I'm going to put in Hole Breacher. I'm playing against a blue red deck. The odds that they have something that I can, that that works with is pretty good. I don't think I want Soul Guide all that much. Mm, what do I want to cut here? I mean, I kind of like my deck. I guess I could cut Tribal Flames. Yeah, that seems fine to me. And then here, I will keep this. Rex Age is very good against them. This hand is, of course, a little borderline. I wouldn't, I would never say otherwise. But uh, a one-drop accelerant into a Rex Age against a blue-red like Tinker deck seems reasonable. Just have to hope to draw another piece of action or two. Let's see. So they, they know that I'm drawing a Verdant Catacombs. All right. Pass the turn. Sylvan Library would also be a pretty sick one here. Yeah, let's blow up that Talisman. Get him. Oh, Titania was a nice draw. All right, let's go Rex Sage. Blow up the Talisman. And then now, if I draw a four, obviously that's great, but having Titania on five is pretty good. Hope they don't kill my Ignoble. All right, Bray's Apprentice is okay. Uh, Terra Sunder is pretty good. Yeah, let's just Terra Sunder the Bray's Apprentice. I don't even have to. Uh, pay the extra mana, and I'll hit with Exalted for three. And then next turn, Verdant or Wooded Foothills for something, Titania it back, and then the turn after that, I get to do it again. <laughs> yeah, this draw's worked out well. I drew one land and two spells so far, and that was that was good. Oh, that's that's a little annoying. That's gonna slow me down. Looks like we're both blowing up each other's mana. Oh, Minsk and Boo. Minsk and Boohoo. Mm. Let's get Taiga. Could it be Taiga or Badlands? Either one is fine. They have a counter spell. Looks like they got something, maybe. Oh, subtlety. Pitching Kappa Cannon here. All right, I like that. No, I, I accept that. Uh, I'll put Minsk and Boo on the top. 
So it's hit for two and pass. And then they clearly didn't have Tinker in hand last turn, or they would have just cast that. I assume they have something to get other than just Kappa Cannoneer. Okay, Hangerback Walker. Yeah, that's fine. I'm still actually going to play Minsk and Boo here. And I just think it, uh, this scales every turn so well. And I'm going to hit with both. Because if they want to trade off Hanger back before it gets more counters, I'm okay with that. Okay, they take four. And then the other thing is by waiting a turn, next turn I can go play Verdant, but don't sack it. Titania, get back Wooded Foothills. And then I have two fetch lands in play with Titania, which is pretty sick. Okay, Minsk and Boo's getting hit for two, which is kind of nice because it means it probably is surviving here. Yeah. I'm just going to put a counter on it put counters on the boo here and attack and see if they can stop that if not they're <laughs> they're pretty much done for all right yeah this is a, a fast round here and then I'm going to play the titania it would be sick if I got mana drained but they didn't have it two turns ago when they cast subtlety so all right one and one let's get to round three all right I am going to be on the play Six land Titania, that's that's a bit much. Um, okay, well, this hand very clearly needs to draw red mana, so I guess, well, no, it even has red mana, never mind. Great hand. I'm going to put Tribal Flames back, because I'm not going to put my land back, and I'm not going to put Minsk and Boo or Territorial Call back, and I'm definitely not putting Time Walk back, so that's pretty easy, isn't it? A fetch land would be an amazing draw here. Wouldn't mind that. Oh, ho, ho, ho. And this is part of why fourth Theorlingus is so good. I'm just going to play it for one here on turn two and attack for three points of damage and then become the monarch. And that'll help draw my third land as well as potentially could just win me the game right here. I mean, if they don't have a way to stop this, then I'm drawing two cards a turn starting on turn two. Fourth Theorlingus. Oh, into fetch land? Mm-hmm. There we go. Look, this is this is kind of how I envisioned this deck playing out a little more. <laughs> Bitter Blossom. A card that shouldn't be in the cube and definitely shouldn't be in your deck. That Bitter Blossom is, is wildly unplayable, un unfortunately. Um, I'm just going to go for it and play Minsk and Boo here. And if it turns out the answer, some some or all of these things, then I guess that's, that, that, that's good for them. But uh, I could have played Territorial Kavu plus Time Walk. But I think Minsk and Boo is better because if I get to cast Time Walk with Minsk and Boo in play, you, you just automatically win. They just they just give it to you right there. But uh, I think that the, either way, like that, this my draw was not a realistic one to beat. Uh, let's just say that. Turn one ignoble. Turn two fourth Erlingus. Turn three Minsk and Boo. And my opponent cast a card that is generally worse than like not casting it. <laughs> I, I just think Bitter Blossom is like quite bad. Shieldred's a good card, but it's not really going to come close to being enough here. Mm -hmm. And let's go... They're at 10. I'm going to put three counters on my knight, because it, it is trample and haste. And then I'm just going to attack with the knight here. And see what they do. They kind of have to block, and then they just die. All right, or, or not block, either way. <laughs> time walk. Uh, having time walk here is just really the <laughs> the cherry on top. All right, land. I'm not even going to show them the territorial Kavuks there. Dead as it gets. I do lose some life off Shieldred, though. You do have to keep, keep that in mind. And let's just attack. I don't really think there's a reason to mess around here. They both have trample, so... Okay, they go to one, and then I minus two, sack boo, and boom. Also, they were just died to the bitter blossom. Well, that was a hand. That was a turn four kill, because it's my turn five, but I took an extra turn. All right, and playing against Shieldred Bitter Blossom works for me. 
All right, on the draw here, yeah, I'm gonna keep this hand on the kind of basis of once upon a time. It's a fine hand, right? I mean, it's turn three, I can play Oko or Rexage, but my hope is that once upon a time will find me one of my one drop dorks, or just like a Sylvan carry to play on turn two, that would also be fine. Okay, let's see, let's draw. Once upon a time, once upon a time I had a bird. Oh, that is a Birds of Paradise. Let's just pay the life, because I don't want to crack wooded foothills yet. I don't really know what I'm going to want to get. And, you know, if games like this don't show you the power of Once Upon a Time, then uh, I don't know what it will take to convince you, because it really does make your good draws happen much more frequently. And now I've got a pretty good shot, despite my opponent being on the play with Mox. Mox into Grist is pretty good. Um, oh, wow. White, green, red, black. Yeah, let's just Tribal Flames the Grist. That sounds like a great way to answer it. I guess uh, <laughs> I guess the Once Upon a Time didn't quite enable that, but that's still fine. And then next turn I can Rex Sage or play Oko, and then I have Titania plus Fetchland. Yeah, this deck's played out pretty smoothly. I, I, it had some fairly bad draws around one, but this is a really good version of this kind of deck. I'll talk more about that when we go over the deck, the post-mortem. Okay. Oh, am I getting Shinobi'd? Oh, that's pretty sick. All right, I'm probably still going to lose here then. Any World Spine Worms? They hit Elite Spellbinder and Flash. All right. You know, I don't love it, but I'm not dead now because if they don't take Oko, I can Oko the Shinobi, though I guess that's a lot of pressure. Otherwise, I can Rexage the Mox. Turn two Grist, turn three Elite Spellbinder is, or sorry, uh, Fallen Shinobi off the Grist token. That is, that is a, a pretty strong play. And Oko down, sure, that's, I actually don't mind that. I think that they were supposed to take the Rex Sage. I mean, I guess I don't know their hand. Oh, well, Minsk and Boo is also just a pretty ridiculously good draw. Play that. Use the ability and put counters on it and pass. If they remove the Minskin Boo, I'm dead. That or the Boo, rather, I'm dead. But that's fine. Well, once you get hit by Fallen Shinobi, you you accept a lot of things are gonna are gonna be bad for you if they have follow up. There's not not many times when uh you you have the luxury of doing too much more. Like if I played Rex Sage, the same would be true. They'd be on one less mana. But now if they just attack Minskin Boo down to one. Next turn, I can use Minsk and Boo to pump Boo up to seven. And then play Titania. I mean, the Titania means I can e even attack for seven with Boo. Uh, turning that game around. I mean, it will really depend on what they have, but <laughs> hopefully they don't uh, tank, 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 and be like, okay, yeah, I guess I'll fatal push your Boo and attack you for <laughs> a million damage. So we'll, we'll see what they've got here. All right, they're sending. Yep. There, this is a, a good sign for me. The elite spellbinders hitting Minsk and Boo down to one loyalty. I hope they don't have a bitter blossom. <laughs> Let's see what they've got. Dreams of Steel and Oil. Well, that is pretty good because I was hoping to have Titania as my follow-up. Okay, it'll depend. So they still don't have a removal spell in hand, clearly, but I will find out what their next play is. I might next turn just go Oko. Make your spellbinder into a 3-3. Three, three. And then, hmm. Oh, oops. Oh, and they thought sees me also. Okay, well, that's fine. I mean, not the end of the world. Olvenwald Oddity. What if I go Oddity, attack for 11? I mean, that sounds pretty good. I will, I already have blue. I, already have, I mean, I have all the colors. I guess I'll get a second blue cast. Ovenwald Oddity. Put the counters on the Oddity. I'm just going to attack for 11 and leave a bird back to chump Shinobi. I'm, I'm just assuming that I'll die to a removal spell. But this way I hit them for 11 if they take it. And then next turn, they're just super dead. They might have to block Boo with the Fallen Shinobi. And I like that too because net, then... That makes it so if they draw a removal spell, I don't just lose automatically. And the 
<laughs> the Oval World Oddity is pretty close to being lethal now. Plus, in addition, I get to chump the Elite Spellbinder with my Birds of Paradise so that I don't, I don't lose Minskin Boo, which also means like a Wrath doesn't do anything. And they're pretty likely to be dead off me attacking for seven and flinging for seven. If I draw a land, I can play this Oko as well. They didn't play a land last turn. They played two discard spells instead of doing anything else. So it's kind of unclear what's in their hand. Obviously, it could be like cards that cost more than four mana. Well, there's a fifth land, so hopefully it's not too much better. Oh, they did have the Wrath. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. All right, well, that worked out so much worse for them. And I'm going to blow up Ketria Triumph. It's their only blue mana. And their only red mana, for that matter. But three counters on Boo. And you remember when everyone said Minsk and Boo is weak? Wait, no one said that. The card's just absurd. Look, I, I'm beating a Fallen Shinobi hit where they had they had some follow-up. They had two discard spells and a Wrath. They didn't have any removal. <laughs> you can't script it. Uh, you, you just can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, classic Bitter Blossoms. I'm just going to put the counters on this and attack. And that'll do it. Minsk and Boo will get us to a nice two and one. And bam, there we have it. Uh, this this deck, I mean, the Flash Worm thing never really came up, though it had Gruff Triplets as backup. Time Walk's obviously just good. I mean, Minsk and Boo. Titania really overperformed, or just performed as I expected, which is five mana, put a land in a 5-3 into play. That's just, plus another, it's, it's it itself is a 5-3. That, that's pretty good. And any additional fetches you have are great. Having four fetches and two one-drops, plus Sylvan Carriated, plus once upon a time was pretty nice. A little interaction with Fracture Identity, Vindicate, Tribal Flames, Rex Age, Elite Spellbinder, and then Fourth Year Lingus, just a great card. So this deck did well. I was happy with it, and Feel of the Dead is still garbage. So <laughs> the more you know. All right, that'll do it for today. Thanks for hanging out as I uh, try to get a little bit more familiar with this cube, though. This cube used a lot of the changes that I had already made uh, just because they're good changes. So it's not super different, and uh, I expect to hop into some 64-player drafts. All right, I'll be back tomorrow with another draft, and I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.